Hello, skaters, or anybody else that's interested in this, or skateboarding, or anything else. What you're looking at is a piece of tin foil on a concrete floor. Why is it there? This is step one in the video about how to make a tail protector for your skateboard out of an existing skateboard rail. Why would you do this? Well, I wanted to protect my tail because it's getting kind of razor down, sharp, affecting my performance and putting my ankles at risk when you have a board slam into your ankle and it's sharp due to razor tail it hurts a lot I don't know if everybody calls it this but we used to call it a uh, shark bite or getting a shark bite something like that so I looked into buying whatever this is called uh, tail protector, bones, tailbone thing. And then I looked at a review or two or three, and it seemed like that piece of plastic that they sell manufactured already was a bit thick. It might be more appropriate for freestyle skateboarding, which I don't really do. And I didn't want to change the dynamics of the board the physics of the board too much. So I sat down and thought about it and I figured, well, it can't be too hard to bend one of the plastic rails that I already have into the shape that would fit on the back of the board, on the tail. So here we go. Now I decided to use some lighter fluid as an accelerant. I'm sure that Something like an acetylene torch would be much better. Perhaps some other kind of torch, maybe a higher powered lighter. This is just a plastic lighter that I'm using. So by using the lighter fluid, you can get a little flame on there. <laughs> it's actually a little harder than it looks to uh, get a big lighter going with these gloves on. I recommend wearing gloves, no matter what you're doing with any kind of toxic material or Whatever kind of project you're working on, I like to wear gloves. It just keeps your hands nice and clean and safe. And I wouldn't want to get a burn here, essentially. So it's just basic science. Not that I'm a scientist, but basic science is that if you heat up plastic, it gets softer, you can bend it. As you can see here, it takes uh, quite a bit of force to bend that plastic. It's dense. I believe this is uh, Enjoy Rail, which they might have branded in the past as uh, Tummy Sticks. Here we go with a nice big flame there. Put enough lighter fluid for it to actually work that time. So you use your muscles there. Just keep bending it as much as you can. I was attempting to bend it and sort of hold it in the bent position that I wanted until the plastic cooled a little bit. Again, I'm not a professional plastic bender. However, it seems like this is the most sensible scientific way to go about it given the limited tools that I had. There I am holding the plastic. It's a bit tedious. And because I was using my phone to record this, I wasn't able to listen to any music, which could probably make the process, if you're going to try to do this, a little more enjoyable. At the same time, here's another nice big flame. Ooh. 
what could it go? For some reason, though, it's interesting to me anyway that the flame didn't really stay on there too long, and it's the plastic itself is basically fireproof, which is what I, something I didn't expect. I kind of expected the flame to travel from the lighter fluid directly to the plastic, and that I might have to snuff it out at some point, but that didn't happen. This plastic, whatever they use, has something, either a coating or the actual material itself that kind of prevents it from catching a fire. Unless, unless it needs, like, to reach a specific temperature, I'm sure it eventually could burn. But, kind of impressed with the durability of that plastic in terms of how flammable it is and or isn't. And uh, while that tinfoil may look like I'm using it for something nefarious, I'm not. It's really just in the event that that plastic would have melted and dripped onto the floor. I didn't want it to get directly on the concrete. So yeah, if you're listening to music, this might be a little less tedious depending on your personality and what you like to do when you are working on some kind of project like this. As you may have noticed, I'm also wearing a face mask to protect myself from any fumes that may be may have been rising from the plastic that was on fire. But even though I wasn't listening to music, it wasn't that bad because it's a holiday, July 4th today and the neighborhood is very quiet <laughs> at, at this point in the day anyway I'm sure that when the evening comes it will not be so quiet but uh, sometimes I find that actually listening to the sounds that are going on in, in my neighborhood is nice when they are not in full swing as they sometimes are You can kind of hear the birds in the background a little bit if you're really listening closely. And all in all, it's just kind of surprising how quiet it can actually get in the borough of Queens, New York City. So if that's something that you appreciate, don't listen to music while you're doing this. Uh, as you can see here, I'm kind of trying to figure out the angle where it should go, how much more I should bend it, and so it's kind of just a ongoing process of lighting it on fire, letting the fire burn out, heating it up a little bit with the lighter itself. I don't know why I was intent on doing the underside mostly, and then from there bending it, putting it back on the board to see if the bendiness is good enough for the shape of the tail and then rinse and repeat I don't know if you can tell but I'm actually using quite a bit of elbow grease here it is a very durable plastic I'm sure I could like look it up and find out what kind of plastic it's made of but I really don't care that much have the rails as they come on the board uh, as you can see right there it's really the first time that I put rails on a board it's not something I've really done before in the past I've used other people's boards that have had them on there but it's not something that I really have too much experience with myself and I'm not a curb skater necessarily really not at all slappies are not my forte when I was growing up sort of looked down on slappies it was more like hey lift your board up you know ollie into it but uh, I don't really feel that way anymore it's just not something I have gotten into who knows if I will maybe definitely not against it it's super impressive um, 
totally different style of skateboarding. I just got this Andy Anderson flight deck. It is really just the best shape and size of board made out of material that isn't supposed to break. It has a larger wheelbase, something I've become more passionate about in the past few years. I guess everybody's kind of getting turned on to wheelbases now, for good reason. I'm not the tallest guy. But I am close to six feet, and I realize that if I have a wheelbase that is smaller than 15 inches, the board just seems to kind of slip out from under me when I'm landing stuff. And maybe not like every skateboarder, but lots of them, I like to land my tricks. So having a larger wheelbase for me seems to make it a bit easier in terms of balance and I have a theory that it, the wheelbase length or size correlates with the size width of the skater's shoulders I'm not uh, you know a broad dude in a sense I'm quite slim but I do have bigger shoulders for my size in comparison to my waist so I feel that that has something to do with it almost like the wheelbase lines up with your shoulders and vice versa I could be wrong that's my intuition so here I am bending this again kind of like the, uh, not that I've ever used one, but these have this commercial for the Bowflex. It's kind of like doing a Bowflex machine. Get a specific kind of tension workout with this project. If you were to undertake it yourself, you will see what I mean. The plastic, even though you heat it up, probably because I'm using this, you know, cheap lighter and lighter fluid presents a significant amount of resistance to bending but you can see here as we progress along bit by bit that the rail is actually starting to bend giving it a good going over right here with some elbow grease definitely looks like I mean business at this point And getting back to the flight deck for a moment. It's not necessarily a review that I want to do of the board. But the reason that I'm making this tail protector for the flight deck is in part due to the thinness of the deck. While it has not cracked or broken and doesn't seem like it will anytime soon. I've been skating it for a little over a month now. A few good sessions, heavier sessions, some street skateboarding, rough ground. Certainly not taking it easy on the board. Not, you know, at the same time, not intentionally trying to put it to a test, but, you know, using it as I would without really considering that without really considering too much the uh, composite and so forth. You know, I, I wanted to get this board so that I don't have to worry about it, so that I can just go skate, not feel like, oh, or anticipate my board breaking, whatever. But because of its thinness, after skating a few street spots, where I was scraping my tail on the ground, the rougher ground, quite a bit, started to get some razor tail. What I've been doing to mitigate the wear and tear is to take some gritty sandpaper, it was 60 sandpaper, 
and file down any kind of chips or what is the beginnings of a chip keeping the wood smooth as much as I could and that seems to work but and you may be able to see in the video here the wood is just kind of wearing away at the back so I could keep sanding it but then I'm gonna lose you know let's say a quarter inch of my tail maybe a little more I don't really want to do that at the same time I thought well the board is symmetrical maybe I could just turn it around change the trucks around ride it in the other direction but instead of doing that because the nose is gonna get the same result eventually I'm gonna go ahead and try to make this tail scrape protector thing and the board is good it's very light as advertised I do wish the wheelbase is a little longer I wish the board overall was a little longer and a little bigger but for you know the mainstream non longboard companies this seems to be on the larger side of wheelbases and widths for what's out there available to the public the skateboarding public consumer who wants to do tricks not just ride a board around and thus far it has served me quite well okay so it seems like I have gotten that bent enough that it will be able to be screwed on there and I am demonstrating the flexibility and or the curvature as I've made it we're gonna close the cap on the lighter fluid and move on to the next step the next step is sanding the rail which has now become a tail protector I'm gonna sand the plastic a little bit try to thin it out so that it's not going to be too much of a addition on the tail hopefully just kind of getting it thin enough so that it's replacing what was lost due to the razor tail it's definitely going to be a bit thicker but the idea is to make it not that much thicker So here I am just kind of sanding the underside of the rail, working to thin it down. As you can see, I'm picking off the plastic bits that are forming. What I didn't expect is that when you sand a durable plastic like this, it essentially melts and so there I'm trying to use the heat to just bend the plastic a little more and that did work this is a belt sander by Bauer that I got from Harbor Freight a little while ago it's held up pretty good for what I use it for it's just fine and that seems to be most of the reviews of every product on Harbor Freight. <laughs> Works for what I need it for. Uh, which is funny. Some of the things, though, from Harbor Freight are just terrible. So read the reviews. Yeah, so you can ch check out the plastic just kind of melting due to the friction, which is interesting. And in its own way, when you are doing this, if you have a belt sander, it's quite satisfying. Especially when the, uh, the excess plastic that you're sanding off gets hard. And then you can just kind of peel it off. It's a sign of progress. 
Moving on down the rail to continue thinning it out in the most even fashion I can manage. I am not a professional. That's my neighbor. She's very nice. We wave. Hello. We are... Uh, say hi to each other, and I recommend that everybody do that with their neighbor. Regardless of anything else, you should say hi to your neighbors. <laughs> Although that seems to be a generational thing, which may have ended with my age group, I don't know. What was I saying? Right, so I'm not a professional, you know, construction person, or carpenter of any kind. I am a complete amateur. And even the process by which I am taking to fashion this tail protector is really just based on the common knowledge that I've gained from tinkering around. You know, I'm a, I'm a tinkerer. A garage tinkerer. Perhaps if you're watching this, you are one as well. So, feel encouraged. I have no professional training, and you could probably tell from watching this. But it doesn't require that. You can have a very minimal, basic amount of skill, in terms of carpentry, woodworking, whatever, stuff like that, and certainly accomplish this. And if you have... Uh, one of these enjoy tummy stick rails laying around or any other rail that you might normally put in the middle of your board give it a shot you know maybe you'll find that it's fun I actually enjoyed this very much it was uh, relaxing and gave me as I said a sense of progress doing something Strengthening my board. It's sort of an area of skateboarding and, I don't know, skateboard ownership that I never really got into before quite recently. I've become obsessed with, as most skaters do, we become obsessed with things related to skateboarding, whether it be videos, equipment, whether I was talking about wheelbase, you know, deck width, composite, whatever. My new obsession is, how do I make my board last longer? And sure, thriftiness is becoming more and more common for a variety of reasons in America. But my interest in sustaining my skateboard and its integrity for as long as possible is not just tied to thriftiness. It is really coming from a desire to push the board itself maybe as far as I push my body in performing skateboard tricks or maneuvers. I don't really like that the majority of skateboards out there really just fall apart after one or two heavy-duty sessions, especially if you're skating street. Again, I'm not a big dude. I'm a bit bigger than I've been. I'm probably hovering around 155, 160. And if I skate a regular deck, even if it's 9 inches wide on the larger side, I will break the tail off that thing, like, kind of guaranteed. And beyond that, before that, at the same time, I will also just chip the living shit out of that board. It will chip so much, almost got my finger there, it will chip so much that it just won't even really have any integrity left, and then I have to buy another one. Now, it's become apparent, I mean, everybody knows that the price of a board over the past, let's say, 35 years has 
pretty much been the same. The quality, though, in my estimation, has diminished overall. I'm not pointing fingers at any manufacturer directly or even indirectly. But I don't, you know, I haven't dived into the reason why, but certainly as a lifelong consumer of skateboarding hard goods, especially the decks, the quality of the wood or the glue, overall construction has gone down and or I'm just using them or abusing them to a degree that I haven't done before, although I don't believe that. I really feel that the strength of the regular average skateboard deck there's my neighbor again, she's returning. The strength of the average skateboard deck has really gone down. It's weaker than it was in the past. And so, in light of all that, I started looking into these boards that are marketed as having superior strength which led me to the, the flight deck by Powell. I'm not saying it's the end-all be-all, but as I mentioned, it has served me really well thus far. And I like the shape. It's definitely unusual. I could, you know, shape the nose to be a bit pointier, like a black label deck or something. But I've left it as is, again, just to get a real sense of the manufactured integrity. And I'm doing some modifications. I don't see why we shouldn't do this as skaters. I was listening to the... What was it? The, um, the Nine Club bit of it, anyway. It's hard to watch the whole of those. They're quite long and exhaustive, but you know, it's a good resource for certain things. They had the Professor Paul Schmidt on there and he was talking about putting resin on the you know, edges of the deck and cutting it with some kind of thinner so that it seeps into the wood more uh, effectively strengthening the board. And probably in the 80s, I'm sure somebody out there knows I wasn't skating in the 80s. started in the late 90s, but I'm sure in the 80s they were doing stuff similar to what I'm trying to do here, modifying the boards to make them last longer because, as I said, the price has been the same since then on decks, and uh, there's really melting right there. So consider, you know, whatever with inflation, rewind inflation, the price of a deck. Sixty-five, seventy dollars in 1985 was probably a lot more money than it is now. And it seems like people skated their boards for longer. Maybe that was the culture. I don't really know. I mean, but again, like I, I checked out this raw footage that uh, his name is Tony Roberts put up of Eric Dressen bombing a hill in the 80s, late 80s or early 90s. Dressen's board gets run over twice by cars going pretty fast and the board seems completely fine. Not saying that's proof, but it uh, supports the theory that I have about the diminish diminishing quality of boards overall as time goes on. I'm sure it has to do with saving money or just increasing profit. I don't, I'm not sure, but Either way, as skaters, we deserve boards that don't just break or chip to death after one or two sessions. It's not fair. We're not all sponsored. Don't get boards for free. We have to take the money that we earn from working and buy them. Which is a blessing. Don't get me wrong, but... Shouldn't have to spend, let's say, uh... over $200 a month on boards? It seems excessive. Part of the original appeal for me with skateboarding was that it was cost effective and for that matter democratic. Everybody can afford to do it. 
reasonably speaking. So again, getting back to the action here, just sanding it down, and sanding it down, picking off the excess plastic, a little collection there in the bottom right hand corner you could see. Also noticing that the uh, circular portion of the sander, the disc, is making a nice sort of trippy image there because of its rotation. And we've sanded it down enough. Now I'm going over to the sander. Look at that nice trippiness. I'm going to try and just get that evened out a little bit. I don't love using the disc side of the sander. It is a little scary for some reason. It is more powerful than the top bit, the belt bit. But again, wear gloves. If you're going to do this, I recommend wearing gloves. These are my favorite gloves. You can get them at any legitimate uh, construction, aka safety store in New York City. They have them all over Queens, some in Brooklyn. I've never seen one in Manhattan. It probably exists somewhere, and I'm sure they have them in the Bronx and Staten Island as well, but you can pop into one of those stores. Most of the stuff is really not great quality, but the gloves that I'm wearing are superb. You can get three pairs for I don't know 15 bucks maybe depending on the store you go to don't pay more than don't pay more than 25 I wouldn't pay more than 25 for three pairs of these they do kind of burn out but when you get like these I believe are the three quarter dip which is referring to the gray material they're very strong and uh I wear these in the winter. I walk dogs with these, my dogs, and they're great for that. They're very grippy, and they keep you warm. And uh, if you're doing any kind of work, otherwise, I would say they are very sufficient for that too. And you don't feel bad about getting them ruined like some, you know, nice deerskin gloves or something. Which aren't even that great. I'm blocking the camera here. Blocking the camera. Just fast forward this bit a little bit here. We're gonna go to the top. The belt portion again. And just get the excess off. Make it as smooth as we can as even as possible. Don't go crazy. Of course, like, decks themselves are built with very, very specific shapes and sizes and stuff for the purpose of allowing you to perform in a very particular way, whatever that way is, to the maximum, but again, I'm not a professional, so we're just doing our best here, and if our best is less than professional, so be it. This is DIY. So if you're doing it yourself, maybe it should have that sort of homemade look, homemade quality. Just really trying to get that evened out, get the excess off. make it look good, but not too good. I'm not going to get this perfect. I don't expect to. You see those uh, bits of blue plastic sort of flying around, those particles? Try to sand outside if you can. I was sanding indoors, well, in that garage space previously. I am no longer going to do that. It's not good for your health. It creates a giant mess. And unless you want to have your 
stuff, your belongings, your tools, your equipment, whatever you store in your space, if, unless you want to have that covered in fine particles of dust, whether wood, plastic, fiberglass, or other. Just do it outside. It's, it's just better. Weather permitting. I'm really going to town on this. Could probably stop at this point, but I'm still going. What I was noticing was like that as I was trying to thin it out, that one part would be a little thicker, so I go to fix that, and then yeah, okay, the other part's now too. Th too thin, da da da, go back and forth, so I guess that's satisfactory enough. Just peeling off the excess. Mm -hmm. Once again, you hear the birds. Goes back to quiet. And then we are going to attach it to the board. But not before we get a nice close up look of how we've thinned this now tail protector down pretty thin. So it shouldn't affect the performance of the deck too much. All right, so we got the board laid flat on top of the table. And I noticed that the sanding of the rail melted the plastic into the pre-drilled screw holes a little bit so I'm just taking a very small drill bit and clearing those holes of the sort of collected melted plastic and I'm using the tiny drill bit because I don't want to affect the size of the pre-drilled hole, being that this rail comes with its own screws, which is nice. It doesn't really take too much effort. It wasn't really too much clogging in there, but enough that I wanted to clear it. drill the tail protector into the deck. I was somewhat worried that once I started drilling the tail protector in that it might snap when I go to bend it to screw in the rest of it from the first point. Again, the durability of the plastic really stood up, so there was no breaking. Just lining it up here, trying to figure out the best place where it's going to go, because really once you, you know, drill the first screw in, you're not going to want to put a second hole, you know, if you mess it up, because it's already kind of challenging the wood in that spot, so try to pick the right spot the first time, if you don't, it's alright, but ideally, you want to get it right, so I'm trying to line that thing up, this is probably the most careful part of the process in terms of my effort. I don't want to screw this up. Screw this up. So just getting that in there, being gentle with it. I didn't want to go fully down with it 
on the chunked it a little bit there. I didn't want to go fully down with it on the first go. So I'm, you know, babying it in there. I have used or played with the for cruiser decks or art decks I have put rails on the board. So you know, like I said earlier, I don't really use them for trick skateboarding, but I've put them on cruiser boards, art boards before, and uh, I've noticed that sometimes the screws don't actually tighten, you know, so it's, I'm just trying not to get it all the way in there here so that it doesn't sort of strip the wood, kind of just making a marking. I could have done with a marker. And, uh, thoroughly futzing with this first one, as you can see. Making it a little tighter now. And I had to make a decision here. Do I go to the right or the left? And... I went to the right. No real good reason. Just dead. You want to go to the left? That's your choice. There's no judgment. So now I'm trying to make it a little tighter. I had the, uh, whatever it's called, the ratchet on the screw gun at around 16 or something, just so that it wasn't too powerful. Moving on to screw number two. a bit awkward to position the tail protector in the, in the right place for the second screw because you still have to bend it. I probably could have bent it a little more earlier but it is what it is so I'm using what I got here trying to make it work. Now, instead of struggling to keep that bent and then get the screw in with the screw gun, I go and I fetch a marker, which is what I should have done in the first place. And this makes it easier. And if you can make something easier, you might as well. So now I'm, I'm bending it and making a marking. And that's where the second screw is going to go. Before I just go ahead and drill that in through the tail protector itself, I do a little whatever this is called. If it's called countersinking, if it's not called countersinking, it's a little pre-drilling. However you want to call it. Just so that that screw really bites when I put it through the eyelet of the tail protector. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to get all squirrely when you're doing the second one because you got to bend the plastic a little bit just give yourself a little edge here uh, go to the right lefty loosey idiot okay and there we go screw number two I if I would go that tight if I did this again but we did Here, I'm just eyeing it up, evaluating how much of the original tail I might sacrifice, having put this tail protector on. I deduced that it isn't a significant amount of surface area loss because the tail, as is, without the protector, is already so razored down 
that it may essentially be the same even though the plastic is a little further in from the original edge. Perhaps that's debatable. I don't know that it really matters, at least to me. I was trying to get the knife out of this thing, and I couldn't do it with the gloves on. Two attempts at this before I figured out that that's not going to work, and I didn't feel like taking the glove off, because when your hand sweats in these gloves, that's the one downside, and they're used already, a little bit used, the moisture makes it so that when you take the glove off, the fingers kind of go inside out, it's a bit annoying. Just digging out a little bit more of that excess plastic with that razor that I had there in my pocket, and we're moving on to the third screw to the left of the original center screw. And we're gonna mark the hole. It's very exciting, folks. Again, doing the pre-drilling with the screw that comes with the product, just about halfway, maybe a little less. If it's called countersinking, great. If it's not, you know what I'm talking about. Give yourself that edge. Make it a little easier. You might as well. While this is DIY, if you happen to know something as a DIYer, rely on that knowledge. I'm just looking at whether or not this is even and also telling myself, well, at this point, it doesn't really matter because we've already drilled the three screws in and we're not going to take it out and do it again. So, it's all good. I also decided that I don't need the full length of the original plastic rail. So now I'm making a marking on the plastic where I'm going to cut it. We're going to make it smaller so that it only protects where the tail would hit upon an ollie, a kickflip, whatever. Only the portion of the deck that snaps. So now I'm taking the rail off. I'm going to cut it down. That's one, two, screw two. One, two, screw, two. <laughs> One, screw, two, screw, three, screw. Get this thing out of the way. This is another product I got off of Harbor Freight, which has been really good. This vice. I don't know which model or exact product it is, but it was on the cheaper side. A lot of things on that are. But it really does handle the job well. It's not very heavy. You can see that I have the shittiest piece of plywood screwed into that sawhorse for a tabletop workbench. And the vise screws into that just fine and doesn't tip it or anything crazy. So if you, you need some light duty vise stuff, highly recommend that particular vice from Harbor Freight. This is a, what do you call it, hacksaw, you know, the one that's supposed to cut metal. You can use it for anything. It's just a fine blade. But yeah, it cuts the plastic no problem. So you just cut along the line that you made on it so that it's down to the proper size that you need it for with no excess. Okay. 
This is the second cut. Look at that, like butter. And I could probably do something with those uh, excess pieces on something else. I don't know. We'll see. So now I'm going to head back over to the sander and I'm just going to sand down the ends because I just cut the plastic and I don't want it to be chunky. I'm going to make a nice angle on the ends kind of mimicking the original angle on the rail maybe that's called getting it beveled I don't know that sounds right even though it's out of focus you can see what I'm talking about and then we're going to turn it around and do the other side. Again, you get to experience the magic of the melting plastic, which happens due to the friction of the plastic with the sander. It's very cool, very satisfying. put it back on the board but this time because it's the final time that we want to put this on the board we are going to use an adhesive in addition to the screws why do we do that well for obvious reasons we want the tail protector to stay on the board we don't want it to come off and if in, in the event that these screws are loosened, the glue will keep it on there. So, I love Shugu. I have used Shugu for many, many applications. Shugu is a life-saving, life-changing product. It's absolutely incredible I have fixed a deadbolt lock with Shugu I have fixed a flat tire on my car with Shugu I fixed a broken draw with Shugu I fixed shoes with Shugu believe it or not Shugu is the man. So take the man being Shugu and apply it to the bottom of your tail protector. We're going to call it the tail protector from now on. That's what it is. Tighten that thing up. You don't want it leaking out of there. Again, probably wear a mask or have good ventilation when you use Shugu because it has an aroma which is very chemical and probably not great for your health. I enjoy the smell of it very much. I don't know if there's any kind of effect that it has on me in terms of brain chemistry. But it does smell good even though I, I wear a mask when I use it most of the time. So now we're going to screw it back into the, the holes that we already made. Just like if it was uh, manufactured already with these holes in it. We go center screw. Screw two to the right. If I could get it in there. This is a very close-up view of my forearm for you. 
There's number two. And then we go to the left, number three. And we get that bad boy in there. Bada bing, bada screw. Nice and snuggle up, I guess. Okay. Looks good. Looks good. See, that one's not really tightening. That's exactly what I was talking about. That one's good. Ratchet that up a little bit. Really get it in there as tight as you can, because I want it to be as flush with the deck as possible. You know, so that it's even all across. And now we're going to clamp this down. Why do we use clamps? Let's see, there you go. What happened there is that the screw went through the top side of the board. So later, I'm going to have to sand that. So we're using clamps again to achieve evenness of the tail protector on the tail of the board. It also makes sure that the glue is going to work. These are very low cost clamps. I don't know if, I believe I got them off of, you know, the big one, I'm not gonna say it. We all know what it is. And doesn't cost too much. They are great. Clamps are great. Any kind of project that you have involving glue, get a clamp. Get more than one. Get a family of clamps. It's a clamp family. Look at that four piece. Beautiful. Alright, then we're gonna let that dry. And once it's dry, we're going to sand the edges so that those are even with the board and should be ready to go. Here we have a closer look at the board after I sanded it a little bit there and added a little more shugu just so that it is as flush as it can be. And now your tail will be protected. 